In today's show, we're looking back at all of the action from Sunday, Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore B-Ball and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Thank you for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. Here we are to look back at Sunday's action. There were eight games on. So let's talk about those games. Before we do that, a little bit of news. Um, I covered a lot of the new stuff on the Waiver Wire show earlier today. Um, so if you haven't heard stuff talking about Shea Gildas Alexander, you hear about it there. But I just thought I'd give an update on a couple of things that are important. Kyle Lowry remains out tomorrow with, for personal issues. Again, we talked about that on the What to Watch For show. But Otto Porter has now also popped up on the um, injury report. It is a back-to-back, so he's going to sit on the front end of the back-to-back. That's not completely abnormal, but just be aware that there's no Otto, no Draymond, no Iguodala. So who starts? Toscano Anderson? Peyton, Kaminga, maybe there's some stream value there, depending on what sort of way they decide to lean. And also the other big news is, of course, about LeBron James. It's a fucking goat outside. It's just a goat. No, it's a fucking goat. Yeah, he's got knee swelling. This isn't good. Um, I don't know what it means long term or how long he's going to be out or anything along those lines, but it can't be considered a good thing that he missed today's game. He's going to miss the next game at least. Um, might miss the rest of the week. They just said, look, until the swelling goes down, he's not going to play. And that's fair enough. It's not great. And that does obviously boost the value of Westbrook and Davis and Monk in particular. But for the Lakers and their value, it's really, really hard to get too bullish on what they're going to do if LeBron's not there because they need LeBron. And it's not not great at all. Hopefully, he's able to get right really soon. But yeah, not, uh, not looking good at the moment for at least the short term for LeBron. Let's talk games. We do have eight of them to cover today. The first one we look at is one of the LA teams. It is the Clippers. They smashed the Hornets. That was pretty uh, pretty consistent, pretty big win over the Hornets, 115-90. This is what we talked about when George went down, is that it was just going to be a situation where there were so many wings and they'd all be up and down. Like today, 25 minutes of Justice Winslow, 13-8 and eight with a steal and three blocks. Like he's actually playing really well, 33 fantasy points. But I don't trust it. He played 20-plus minutes, three straight games. Serge Ibaka's basically out of the rotation. Terrence Mann's becoming a just backup-level player, like 21 minutes he played. He's a clear 14-team drop, by the way, Terrence Mann. I don't know what you do with Winslow. You add him in 16s. But with Winslow, Jackson, Kennard, Boston, Morris, Coffey, Bledsoe, Mann, it's a lot of bloody guys to try and get someone to have consistent value. The guy who is giving consistent value is the duck, Luke Kennard, but only played 27 minutes. He had 14 and 10 with three threes, but there's no guarantee that in 27 minutes tonight, he remains a must roster player. He is for now. Won't remain there necessarily. Amir Coffey, really well, bad, really good. And then this, seven points in 26 minutes. Again, it's the squish that happens here. Eric Bledsoe played high 20s. He played 16. Reggie Jackson had played low 20s. He had 19 points in 27 minutes. I think all of these guys, with the exception at the moment of Kennard, are uh, just fringe 12-team players. Yeah, Winslow a bit deeper. Coffee a fringe 12-team guy. But even BJ Boston stepped up with 19 points in 22 minutes. And I, I like BJ. But how do you do this consistently? Zubats, I think, is moving towards a drop. Seven points, 10 rebounds, 20 minutes. Hardenstein and Winslow taking minutes away from him. He's not going to be, I don't think, a 28-minute-a-night player. And if you do want to move on, especially in shallower formats, he's not a must-roster player, Zubats. Hardenstein, 7-6. and six. The two blocks are nice, but 29% shootings rough. He's usually much better than that. Yeah, on, on a permanent basis, I'd much prefer Hartenstein to Zubats. It's, it just feels very, very messy the way this rotation is going to be in terms of trying to get fantasy value out of it. I, I don't see how you do it. For the Hornets, Lamello, 23-6-10, 38 minutes. I think that little dip that he had is over, which is great, while Bridges had 18-9 and nine with two blocks. Unfortunately, poor shooting, 30, 32% from Bridges, 
Well, Cody Martin's playing a lot with no Ubre, no Haywood, 39 minutes, but really not doing much. Eight points, two threes, and a steal. He's just a steal streamer. PJ Washington, it's impossible to keep a track of what he's doing. Well, I can keep a track of it. This is how it goes. It's low minutes, big minutes, low minutes. He 20 minutes, 10.7 rebounds. It's really hard to consider that must roster. Sure, have him when he's playing well, drop him when he's playing poorly. Mason Plumley had 10 and 10 in his 24 minutes. Rogier, a uh, stinking game, 10 points on 29% with two threes. But the Washington Plumley situation, I think is going to be pretty ugly for a little bit of time here. Um, and I don't know if there's going to be any real you know, solid resolution to it. The Lakers lost to the Hawks. The Hawks, despite a really poor start to the season, are coming along pretty strong at the moment. I believe they've won six in a row putting up some big numbers at the moment. They win this one, 129-121. Malik Monk played 38 minutes, 33-10, and 10, eight triples, five assists. It's ridiculous coaching that he was benched in favor of Avery Bradley and Trevor Ariza. Ridiculous. He should continue to start while LeBron James is out. But Frank Vogel's absolute insistence on playing, playing Avery Bradley has got to be top three in terms of mysteries in the league. Bradley played another 22 minutes. He had four points. He actually went out of the rotation at one point this season, Bradley, and then just came back and just thieves minutes every game. Monk needs that role consistently. He's a must-roster player, Malik Monk. Tone Davis, 36, uh, 36 minutes. 27, 5, and 4, two steals and a block. Don't think there's any minutes restrictions anymore. Well, Westbrook, he's coming good. And not good in terms of on-court play winning games, but he's coming good in terms of being able to um, you know, more contribute to your fantasy leagues. Like, and that's when he was on the Bylow show a couple of weeks ago, that's what we hoped that we'd get out of him. Um... Better, better numbers. What did he do in this one? Sorry, 20 and 7 with 12 assists. That's it's solid. Two or five from the line doesn't cut it though. Mello, 11 points in 21 minutes. Not must roster. Horton Tucker, obviously not must roster. Well, Stan Johnson had 10 points in 29. And he's getting good run and he'll get mid to high 20s most games, but that's really only a deeper league scenario. For the Hawks, some interesting stuff. The center position, what's going on? 22 minutes from Yekara Kongo and he closed over Clint Capella despite having four fouls. 16 and 5 on 89% shooting. Capella? He wasn't a slouch, 15 and 9 on 75% shooting. Is it going to remain a 24-24 split? Or really, in this case, like a 24-22 with Johnny Collins getting some? I don't know that that's the case. I wouldn't be rushing to grab a Kongwu for 12. In 14, I would. I'd make sure of it. And I love a Kongwu as a player. But is a 23-minute-a-night center some nights, 20 minutes another night? Is that worth just absolutely hanging on to? Remember, Clint Capella cannot be traded. So they'd need to just outright bench him for Okongwu to be a must-roster 12. He cannot be traded. Bogdan Bogdanovich. And for those of you who will ask why, the reason why is because he just signed a contract extension and that puts him out of action for being traded until next season. Only 26 minutes for Johnny Collins, but 20 and 11 with three steals and Trey Young had 36, 5 and 12. And the worry that I had with Hunter and Herter, what would happen when Bogdanovich returned? Well, this is what happens. They're all shithouse now. And that's a little bit unfair. But nine points in 26 minutes for Hunter. He took just five shots. No threes, no steals, no blocks. He is now, despite people telling me that he's awesome, he's now 190th over the last two weeks. He's 237th for the season, despite playing 29 minutes a game. Yeah, is is, is this your king? To be fair, look, he was putting up numbers that made him a 12-team league guy when Bogdanovich was out. It's no longer the case. See you later. Same with Kevin Herter, who played 24 minutes, five points. Get out, get out of here. No point holding him. That's a pattern as well, 24 minutes. He's played that in three or four games in a row because Lou Williams is getting minutes, Gallinari. They're healthy. And when they're healthy, there's not enough there for those guys. Bogdanovich, it's going to be hard, I think, even to have him as absolute must roster. 10 and 5 with two threes. Too many blokes. Um, Gallinari had four points. He's still rostered in 25% of competitive leagues. Um... If you could tell me why, I don't, I don't know what the reason is. Maybe it was just a stream in today. Uh, I don't really get it. He should not be rostered in a 12-team league. But what should be rostered is Bilt Bar. Because Bilt Bar is the best tasting protein bar ever. You want to get jacked. You want to look like me. Maybe you need to get some of this protein into your life. Don't go for the sugary treats. Because they're just full of fat, full of sugar, full of calories. Get a Bilt Bar. It tastes just as good, if not better. And it's high in protein, low in carbs, low in fat, low in sugar. It's the perfect snack. And it's great if you're working out as well. So go to built.com, use the promo code LOCKED15, L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5. And you'll save 15% off your order of delicious, nutritious Built Bars. Built Bar is pff, built different. The NBA trade deadline is coming up. 
Thursday, February the 10th at 3 p.m. So we're going to have a live show on Locked On NBA between 2 p.m. and 4 p.m. Eastern, hosted by Kim Becker, John Corrales, Josh Lloyd jumping in there as well. We're doing analysis on all the moves that happen, all the moves that don't happen, and the fantasy benefits and all that sort of stuff over on the Locked On NBA YouTube channel. So go to that channel, find Locked On NBA, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you will see when we go live. Next game, Blazers Bulls. Um, yep, Chicago won pretty comfortably, 130-116. Covington, 11-7, and seven, three threes, two steals. You have to think he's getting traded, but who knows? Yeah, banking on that happening is never a good way to go about it, but if there's anyone who's going to get traded, it's probably him. McCullum had 29 and Powell had 22. Good net games from both of those players, while Simon struggled with his efficiency, but had 21, 3, and 6. Another good volume game. I don't even know if he's a sell high, to be honest. No one's really coming back to this. Well, Nance, yeah, at some point, but that's not impacting usage for Simons. I think he'll be fine. Nurkic had some foul trouble, only 11 and 4. He'd been playing really well. He didn't play particularly well here, but I don't think we need to worry too much about where his value lies. And my man, Trendon Watford, 22 minutes, 10 points, 3 blocks. Not adding him in 12 or 14 team leagues. Just to watch. Add in 16 maybe. But I like what he can do more than Greg Brown or Calgon Blevins or Tony Snell even. Probably even more than Ben McLemore. I like him as a player. For the Chicago Bulls. It's Bulls. It's Big Bulls. Bulls is it. Bulls a bitch. Yeah, he's really rolling at the moment. Vooch, 50 fantasy points, 24 and 14. Three assists, triple one. Good numbers. Well, DeRozan had 23, 4 and 10 and 2 steals. Good numbers. Levine was a little bit off. 20 points for the skater boy. Shot just 39 points. Had a steal and a block with three threes. While Io Dasunmu. 34 minutes, only 7 points and took 3 shots. Usage in the toilet. Terrible. But 6 rebounds, 11 assists and 2 steals is fantastic. The usage is very, very low. He still hit 100% of his threes. 67% overall. And the numbers remain high there. But those assists, they've been great most of the time. I'm still not convinced that this level of production lasts. But until Lonzo and Caruso come back, then yeah, like he is a 12-team league guy. More so than Kobe White, who had 18-3-6. Good game from Kobe. The defensive opponent wasn't particularly great. But good to see Kobe get those numbers back there. Not much else I don't think to talk about the Bulls. I know, I better talk about Javante. He played 24 minutes. He scored 16 points. He's had a triple. No, he didn't have a triple. He had two threes, a steal, and a block. Solid numbers. Again, it's not a realistic expectation for Javante as we move forward. But 16 teamers, you've got to grab him. 14 teamers, you have to consider him. Because he's got a strong role. And he can be a good rebounder and good defensive stats type streamer. Not a guy that I would care for too much in 12-team formats, though. The next game we take a look at. the Sh- I was going to say the Sh- Charlotte. No. The Cleveland Cavaliers and the Pistons. The Pistons win with a comeback. 115-105. That is you know, really, really impressive from Detroit. Not great from Cleveland. Garland did his thing, 24-4-7. and seven. Dean Wade, he's all over the place, isn't he? 14 points, 4 threes, steal on a block. Probably a 14-16 to 16 team league guy, but he could easily play 17 next game. Osman had 13 points with not much else, but he only played 22 minutes. His value is all over the shop as well, deeper league sort of player. And Okoro is just not remotely close to a 12 or 14 team league guy, 9-3-4 and four in his minutes. Mobley had 18-9 and nine with three blocks. Which is good because he's been struggling a little bit. The free throws are still a massive issue. Four of nine from the line. And Jarrett Allen had 15 and nine. Not a great one from Kevin Love. He had eight and seven. He'd been playing at a really high level prior to this. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. But it's not a great line. For the Pistons, Cade Cunningham didn't hit a single shot in the first half. Ended with 19, 10 and 10. Three steals, a block and two triples. 57 fantasy points. I think he's going to be an absolute fantasy monster. I think a top 30 finish from here, well, not finish, a top 30 run from this state forward is not out of the realms of possibility. Uh, I just think there's big numbers coming. The depressed penis, this is your sell high. 31 points for Sadiq Bay, three threes. A steal and a block. He took 20 shots. Jeremy Grant's coming back. Do you reckon Jeremy Grant and Sadiq Bay take 20 shots? Not a chance. Bay might go back to 11 shots you know, for 13 points. This is it. This is the sell high. You've got to do it now. Trey Lyles, also 15 and seven. A steal, two blocks, great. But Olenek and Grant literally might return next game, and I don't know where that leaves Lyles. It doesn't leave him with this level of uh, role for sure. Killian Hayes came off the bench again. Still had his six assists. He doesn't offer much else. He didn't have a steal. But assists and steals has value with stream, streamer. While well, MC, Hamadou, Diallo. Have a time. Nobody should be holding him in 12 or 14 team leagues. Six points in 19 minutes, and Corey Joseph had two in 27. Surely, surely Corey Joseph moves out of the starting lineup at some point. It was also a really good game for the Flamengala, Alf Stewart. Is that you, Mr. Stewart? Well, who the hell else do you think it'd be? 
Get in here, you pair of flaming galahs. Double double is nice. 14 and 12. 31 minutes is nice, but that's still pretty empty for getting 31 minutes, which we have absolutely no way of believing he will play 31 minutes a night. He just, you can't believe that. Alinek will return. Lyles will play a summer center. Grant will play a summer center. He might get 24 a night here. I do not believe that Isaiah Stewart is a 12 team league must roster player. Just don't believe he can get there. But what, or, no, I don't know what I was going to say then. Carry on. All right, so let's do the next game. It is the Denver Nuggets just spanking the Bucks. What a huge win this is on the road. Nick Jokic, man, he's a freak. 136, 100. Big Chungus leads the way. Big, big Chungus, big Chungus, big Chungus. Big, big... He only played 28 minutes. 18, 9, and 15. Three steals, a block, and two triples for 59 fantasy points. Jesus. Uh, Aaron Gordon was great, 24 and 7. He was questionable heading into this game, but put up the numbers here. And Monty Morris, big game, big fella. 18 points, 88% shooting, 7 assists and 4 threes. This is great, but then he'll have 7-3-3 yeah, three and three next game. He's a fringe 12-team league player whose role is pretty set in stone. But what I am liking is the big stiffy Bones Highland. Malone is trusting him more, and he's, he's repaying it. 13-5-6 and six with 3 threes. It's great that we're getting that role out of him. Davon Reed and Faku out of the rotation. I'm not saying that Bones is going to have 12 or 14 team league value, but deeper leagues, that's important. Barton had 15 in 27. Good stuff there. While Jeff Green, of course, had two points in 24 minutes. The Jeff Green corollary. I don't know if corollary is the right word, but when Jeff Green has a big game, just prepare yourself for seven shit ones in a row. It's just what happens throughout his whole career. Two points on seven shots in 24 minutes. It is like clockwork. Bryn Forbes had 14, while Austin Rivers moved to the bench and had 8 points in 24. Again, Rivers had put up a couple of good games. He just has no way of being able to continue that level of form. And we saw that. That's just Austin Rivers. We know this. But the Bucks, pretty miserable performance. 29 and 9 for Yanni. Rough from the line. Holiday had 14, 5 and 8. Solid stuff. Middleton really struggled. Only took 8 shots and had 9, 5 and 7. Grayson Allen played 31 minutes. The 31 minutes are important. 11 points with two threes there. Or DiVincenzo got 18 and Connaughton got a smidge under 20. I don't think that Allen is a 12-team league player, but he's at least stream-worthy over Connaughton and DiVincenzo. Bob Portis only played 23 minutes. He didn't play well, 11 and 5. He's really starting to fall off at the moment, 146th over the last two weeks. We're not dropping him or anything, but numbers for him are down at the moment. Overall, just a pretty disappointing night for the Bucks as they get pretty, compre comp? pretty comprehensively beaten by the Denver Nuggets. Let's go to the next game, the Dallas Mavericks and the Orlando Magic. This one was a lot closer with the Mavericks losing to the Magic, 110-108. Doncic, 34-12-11. Another big game from Donch. This is without Porzingis. Marquise Chris stepped it up, didn't he? 14-4, 19 minutes, four steals and two blocks. Deeper leagues, he's worth looking at if Porzingis is out. Bullock played more minutes. He had three steals, he had three threes, he had 10 points. But 31 minutes is interesting. I'm not adding him in 12, but he's got some 14-team value. While Brunson did have a trip to the locker room, but was able to return 15-4-2. and two. Dwight Powell started, but we don't care for that. While Muxy Cleaver started and continued to start, he just did nothing. He, at this point, he's more of a 14-team league guy who you can stream in for a blocks and threes combo. Two threes, six points, one block. Rough night for Finney Smith, 10 points. Hit three threes, but not much else there. I think overall with Hardaway out, you're not going to get Bullock or Finney Smith, or Kleber, or any of those guys absolutely cementing themselves as 12-team guys. They're going to be fringy. They're going to be streamies. They're not going to be must-roster guys. It's going to be Doncic, Porzingis, and Brunson, and I think that's probably it. For the Magic, Chumra Kiki only played 24 minutes, but it didn't matter. He went crazy. 19-5-4 with three steals and three threes on 70%. Now, we can wrap up the 70% and know that's fake. 50% three-point shooting is also fake. Um, but the, the steals aren't. He does it every game, basically. So he's a big, big steals guy, and that is, that is elevating his value. But if you need steals, there's hardly anyone better out there. Wendell had 14 and 14, while Flaming Mo Wagner had 18 points. Not much else there for Mo. Not Flaming, not, sorry, refresh that. This is not Flaming Mo Wagner. This is Franz Wagner. Franz Wagner had 18, 2 and 3. Flaming Mo did this. 14 points for Mo in 15 minutes with four rebounds. Whenever he gets a roll, he produces. Mo Bamba, yeah, I don't, I don't, I like watching Mo Bamba play. 10 points in 24 minutes, two threes. We've got to hold him, but he's not, he shouldn't be a guy that's playing as many minutes for them as he is, I don't think. Suggsy, 33 minutes, rough, really rough. Five points on 20%, but I'm holding. Five assists, two steals, and a block. While Cole Anthony, yeah, another rough night. 16 points on 38% with six assists, but he continues to struggle. They are both holds, but not great production at all. 
We got 27 minutes from Gary Harris, while Terence Ross had four points in 21. Both Harris and Ross, who have had stretches as being 12-team league guys this season, are not 12-team league guys anymore. And I think you can look at them as more 14-team league guys and players that you stream in on days like this. Let's go through to the next game, the Spurs and the Suns. This wasn't the real Spurs lineup. There was no Murray. There was no Pirtle. There was no Derek White. So they started some different players. Uh, they took it up to the Suns, but there's not a lot we take out of this. Those injuries, or you know, whatever they are, rests or injuries to Murray, Pirtle, and White aren't really anything long-term to worry about. They should be back next game. Trey Jones was great, 15-3-9. But again, he moves into like a 13-minute-a-night role when those other guys return. Doug McDermott took on more usage, 24 points with six triples, but we can't rely on him. Calden Johnson, production didn't actually change too much. 16 and eight, four assists, two threes, nice numbers. He's providing 12 team value for now, but didn't really step it up. Vassell had a real big opportunity and did nothing. Seven points on 17%. He played 31 minutes. And while I like him, I like the upside. I don't think there's any point tying up a roster spot, holding on to him. We got 22 minutes of um, Drew Eubanks and 17 minutes of Jock Landau. They combined for 11 and 8, so nothing great there. But it won't matter because Eubanks will just go back to being the backup behind Pirtle. And Lonnie Walker actually popped off for 22 points, but he took 21 shots to get there and he didn't provide much else apart from two steals. And he just goes back to being a guy that's barely a top 250 player this season. So while these games are good, and I thought Josh Primo showed quite a bit as well, 13 points with three threes, it has, actually offers us very little for the future. For the Suns, Chris Paul was amazing again. 20 and 8 with 19 assists. Bridges, despite all of the concerns with Bridges, he's now back to being a top 100 player. He had 26 and 8 with two threes, while Booker had 28 with four triples. Good games. Biombo started, not his best. Had some, no, didn't even have foul trouble. 10 and 11 in 22 minutes with JaVale McGee back and um, playing 14 minutes. But Biombo just keeps streaming him until Aiton returns. Whenever the hell that is. You know, Aiton had, what, a sprained ankle? Oh, it's not too bad. We're two weeks later, he hasn't returned. Cam Johnson, 11 and 5. Like, it's fine. You hold him until Crowder comes back, and then I really, really doubt he's going to remain must roster. Landry Sham had hurt his ankle late, so keep an eye on an Ish Wainwright, who had 10 points in 20 minutes with no pain and now no Shamit. You're going to get more Alfred Payton, and maybe a little bit more Wainwright, who's stepped it up the last couple of games. That's just a deeper league thing. You know, 18 team, 20 team league. But Wainwright is going to have probably an extended run here as being part of the rotation. That might also help preserve a little bit of Cam Johnson's value if Shamit is out. But on a healthy team, Shamit's like a 12, 13 minute a night player. The problem is they're not healthy with Crowder, with Payne, with um, Aiden all sideline and now Shamit out. There is quite a few minutes that do open up now on this Suns team for someone to step up. Not that it's going to make a difference for 12 or 14s, but something maybe in those deeper formats we can take a look at. All right. Let's go to that last game of the night. The Jazz and the Wolves. The Jazz win this one very, very comfortably. Sorry, no, they don't. The Wolves win it comfortably. 126-106. Let's start with the bad news. Joe Ingles suffered a non-contact knee injury. Um, that's, yeah, that's it for Joe. That's um, that's a torn ACL, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking. And when your Woj puts out tweets like there is immediate concern based on thoughts in the locker room. They'll confirm tomorrow. Doctors know. Like, they do the manual test, and that's right every time, basically. So they've done it. They just never in the NBA will announce it. In other sports, they do. I know in the AFL, the doctors, they'll say it, and then post-game press comments say, yeah, look, it's ACL. Like, it's done. Um, and then they go have the MO, and they go, we'll just confirm it tomorrow. In the NBA, they never do. They always say, oh, there's fears of a significant injury, and they'll confirm it tomorrow. He's done. Unfortunately for Joe, that's it for him for his season. I'm thinking 99.9% like sure that is it for Joe Ingles for this year. I don't know where this leaves him in his career, to be honest. I think he's a free agent and he's 35 and now rehabbing an ACL. You hope everything's all right for him, but that's not great news for them, for him. That is it for him. Now, he wasn't a 12-team league guy. He wasn't even a top 230 player this season. So not even a 14-team league guy. There is no one who jumps and becomes a 12-team ad. If you are holding Joe Ingles in 12-team leagues, you were mistaken in doing that. And now, instead of replacing this, means you drop him and you add someone else. The minutes will go, those 24 minutes or so, 25 minutes. Maybe they sign Daniel House for the rest of the season. He's out in COVID protocols on a 10-day at the moment. He'll get some extra minutes. Trent Forrest will get a couple more minutes. Jordan Clarkson gets maybe one or two more minutes. Rudy Gay gets one or two maybe more minutes. Jared Butler gets a couple of minutes. There's nobody who will step... Because Joe Ingles, again, wasn't providing anywhere near 12-team value. Wasn't even really providing like 18-team value. So there's nobody who's going to step up and become a 12-team league ad or a 14-team league ad. I don't believe in this scenario. The Jazz are also struggling. They've lost 11 of their last 15. They are now without Ingles, Gobert, and Mitchell. Those guys could return. 
Also, remember, this is a two-game week for the Jazz. I know the Ingles injury is a long-term thing, but you're not scrambling to add Rudy Gay or Eric Pascal or Russo O'Neal even jumping up that much. I don't think it changes much for these guys for a two-game week. Bogdanovich, finally a good game. 33 minutes, 23 points, four triples. Good. Conley had 22, four and five with three steals. Really good. Maybe they have to be really cautious now about not being able to sit Conley on the back-to-backs because Ingles is out and they need Conley. I think that's possible. Clarkson played 34 minutes. If you can sell Jordan Clarkson. J-O-R-D-A-N-C-L-A-R-K-S-O-N. You got to do it before um, Mitchell returns. 17, two and five. O'Neal had nine, two and two. Hassan Whiteside played 29 minutes. He had 7 and 12 with 3 blocks. As I said on the Waiver Wire show, he's got value until Gobert returns. Or not Waiver Wire, maybe the week preview show. But they've only two games this week. You've got to wait two, two days burning a roster spot on Whiteside with the potential that he goes and plays 14 minutes next game. Just drop. I would be very happy to drop him. Even if, again, Gobert doesn't play this week, you're only getting two games of Hassan Whiteside. Drop him. Open up the roster spot. Pascal had 9 points in 22 minutes. People actually think Pascal's a good player. I don't think he is, and he's not going to be a fantasy impact guy really at all. For the Wolves, they were without Russell and Beverly, and they started a weird lineup. Jordan McLaughlin and Malik Beasley started. Not that those guys did anything. Beasley had eight points in 23 minutes, and he continues to be horrible, and he's not a 12 or 14 team league guy. McLaughlin played just the 27 minutes, but had four steals to go with 12 points and five assists, which is fine, but I don't really buy anything there long-term. Well, Jaden McDaniels, perfect nine of nine for 22 points. Of course, that's completely fake. He's not going to be able to do that continually. Do not add him in 12-team leagues. Maybe stream for 14, that's it. Townsy had 31, 11, and 10. A huge game from Towns. While Goose had 15 points, but took him 16 shots to get there. And not a great night from Jared Vanderbilt Bar with just five points, but nine rebounds, two steals, two blocks. And if you have Vanderbilt Bar, look, what are you asking for? Rebounds, steals, and blocks. You're also asking for good field goal percentage. Unfortunately, he didn't deliver that. But otherwise, don't complain. That's a great line. For what Vanderbilt gives you, that is a great line. The artist formerly known as Torian Prince is stepping up at the moment, not for fantasy leagues, but for the Wolves. 10 points, two threes, two steals, and six rebounds. A really good game from Prince. Um, I think that's probably about it. Oh, Jalen Noel actually came off the bench, had 10 points, five assists in 26 minutes. He has more stream value, I think, than Malik Beasley or Jordan McLaughlin with the absences of Russell and of Beverly. Let's look at the lines of the night now for today. Your monstrous does go to Big Chungus, Nikola Jokic. Your waiver wire is Dougie McDirt. Your young gun is Cade Cunningham and the dud of the night. Where's the sound drop? I tell a man's not hot. It's DeAndre Hunter. Your top 10 players today for category leagues. Jokic at number one, followed by Towns, Doncic, Monk, Vucevic, Paul, DeRozan, Young, Cunningham, and Bay. Your top 10 players rost in under 50% of leagues. Doug McDermott, don't buy it. Justice Winslow, interested, but probably more 14. Jaden McDaniels, more 14. Marquise Chris, 14 stream when Porzingis is out. Dean Wade, eh, I don't really buy it. Javante Green, deeper leagues again. The Big Stiffy, love it for deep leagues. Jordan McLaughlin, mm. Trendon Watford, deep leagues. And then the artist formerly known as Torian Prince, like 20 team leagues. And then your top 10 players in points leagues. Towns at one. Paul, Doncic, Jokic, Cunningham, Trey, Monk, Vucevic, Lamello, and DeMar DeRozan. That will do it for us today. Hope you guys enjoyed the show. Hope you guys are here watching. Thumb it up if you are on YouTube. Leave a comment, subscribe, notification bell. And if you're listening to the audio version, go follow it on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on the Odyssey app. Give us a five-star review as well. That is always awesome. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.